So what is GeoJSON and how do we make it? And how do we get it into or overlay it onto our map? GeoJSON, it stands, well, JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. Basically what it is is it's data stored as a JavaScript object. So whereas XML basically uses a markup language to store and organize data, um, JSON uses JavaScript, uh, the object variable, to do the same thing. Now, you can make them in a variety of ways. If you use ArcGIS, you can um, use the toolbox, conversion tools, JSON toolbox, I don't even know what to call these things in ArcGIS, and it's, it's over there and you can export or import JSON. Um, that's a great way to do it. If you don't have ArcGIS, you can use QGIS to do it, but another um, great method is to just use an online, free online service. CardoDB is one of my favorites. And they allow you pretty much, if, at least if you're a student these days, and probably even if you're not, they allow you to upload as many tables as you want. And so we could upload a table of drone strikes, etc. Well, let's do this actually, drone strikes. So I've got this drone strikes data here, and once you get it loaded, um, you can go to Edit, Export, GeoJSON. Let's try it. So you export it and I'm going to save it into it's probably not good. If you're a hacker on the internet will see how I organize my website. So let's save it into our JS folder. And then let's open this um, puppy up with brackets. Let's just open this puppy up. I don't want to search the App Store. All right. One way around this is to just change the extension to .js. Nope. Use JS. And then open with. Good lord. It should be over here now. Then just open it with brackets now. Um, this is it. This is uh, drone strike data. It's unfortunate data, but regardless of how you feel, you can make a pro or anti drone strike map here. Um, but yeah, it's just data stored as an object. This should be a tip off that it's a JavaScript object if you've taken um, gone through the Code Academy stuff. So all we have to do here, quite frankly, is this. We type a variable name, and it's a good form in my mind, and probably I've heard this somewhere to use the same name as the name of the file. So drone strikes.js. We type var drone strikes equals and basically we've just created a variable of all of our data called drone strikes and it now equals this huge um, object here. And it's good form to put a semicolon at the end. Hit save. Okay. Good deal. So we've got drone strikes. Now how do we bring this in? Well, before we can add it to our map, we need to make sure that the index has read it because it's a JavaScript file. And so this isn't too hard, actually. All we have to do is go here, and because it's a JS file, we can add it just like a regular JS file. By the way, that phone was my wife saying, are you picking up the kids? Where are you? But don't worry. This is worth it. It's mapping. All right. Drone strikes.js. There we go. And so now, basically, as the browser moves through and reads top down, it's going to read jQuery, leaflet, and then it's going to read this one variable that's in this drone strikes thing. But because it has a variable name, we can then, in our script, actually address and use this variable because it'll have been loaded by the browser. Voila. So we've now loaded our drone strikes data. We haven't placed it on the map yet. And I need to pause so I can call my wife and see if I'm in trouble. Talk to you soon. Voila! It turns out that they are about to be at the loading dock to pick me up from work, so I must go. So I'll end here. Um, basically what we have is we've imported our GeoJSON, and I showed you how to make it pretty quickly by uploading data to cardodb.com, or you can also export it from QGIS or ArcGIS into um, GeoJSON format.
And in the next tutorial, I will show you how to add it to your map and style it based on its own on the, the attribute table found therein. So, off to dinner. Thank you for watching.